When working with Poisson regression, we might be able to work with the count outcome, or we might need to model a rate as an outcome. We'll talk about in a moment the difference between counts versus rates and when we can work with each of those, as well as we might be able to model data on an individual level versus having to model the data on an aggregated level. So I'll talk about what each of these are, and then following this video, we'll look at two different data sets um, that we're gonna work with for Poisson regression. Um, one that's individual count data, and one that's aggregated rate data. So let me talk a little bit about these in concept before we get to looking at those data sets. So I guess first I want to point out, we'll think of y as being the count, the number of times the event occurred, and the rate is y over t, the number of times the event occurred per unit time. So if individuals have the same follow-up time. If everyone has the same T, the same amount of time they've been followed for, we can model the count. If T, the follow-up time, is different for individuals, we must model the rate. And let me just give a, an example of that. So one of the data sets, and we'll give a, a more explanation in a separate video, but one of the data sets we're going to look at is has an outcome variable of the number of times people visit a physician in a year. Okay. Now, everyone has followed for exactly one year, so for all the individuals we can compare the number of visits because they each went, they were each followed for one year. But suppose that we had followed people for different amounts of time. And let's just suppose that person number one Suppose that they had one visit in one year. And person number two, suppose they had three visits in three years. Now when looking at these, these are the same, um, these are the same on a rate basis, right? One visit in one year, three visits in three years. But if we were to try and just compare the accounts of these, right, it's going to look like this person went much more than this person, right? They went three times, they went only once. Okay, so it's, I think, kind of, in some ways kind of obvious, but also worth um, talking about that if everyone has been followed for the exact same amount of time, then we can model the outcome as a count. If, in our sample, people have been followed for different amounts of time, some people are looking at the number of visits in a year, some people the number of times they went over only seven months. Right? If we have different amounts of time they've been followed for, then we need to model the rate. And something that's coming up, I'm just going to mention the word now. We'll talk about what it is in a separate um, video. So separately we're going to look at how does the Poisson regression model look when we're modeling count data? How does it need to look when we're modeling rate data? And what, what's going to change with rate data? is we're going to need to include something called an offset. An offset, it's a fancy sounding word. All it really is, is saying we're going to need to include the denominator in the model in some way. We're need to, going to need to tell it how many times did the event occur and how much time were they followed for. We're going to need to give it those two pieces of information separately. Okay, but in that video I'll talk more about the idea of an offset. Then, when working with Poisson data, the data may be recorded on an individual level or it may be aggregated. So let me talk a little bit about when we'll end up with individual versus aggregated data. So, when an event um, can occur repeatedly, 
or often, we can model on an individual level. I'll save these and then I'll provide some examples for it. When the event of interest can occur only once or when it is rare, meaning we're not likely to observe it happening um, more than once very often for individuals, we must aggregate. So again, in that previous example, if we're looking at the number of times someone visits a physician, <clears throat> that can happen repeatedly. Right? People can go see a physician more than once, and they often do. Right? So they might go zero times, but they might go one or two or three. They might go 10 or 15. Right? This event can happen more than once, and it often will. In that case, we can record data on an individual level. Um, <clears throat> but what about when events um, can occur only once. So suppose we're looking at trying to estimate lung cancer death rates. Okay. We can't record data on how many times did a person die from lung cancer. Right? If someone dies from lung cancer, they've only died once, it can't happen again. Okay. So what we'll need to do is aggregate people. We'll need to form some groups or some categories and say, look at all the people in a particular age group and say a particular um, biological sex group, how many deaths were there in that group? How many person years exposure were there in that group? Okay, so if things can only occur once, or if they can occur multiple times, but they're rare, so they're not likely to occur um, more than once for individuals, we're gonna need to aggregate them into groups. So, the two data sets we're going to look at, I'm going to mention this one, although there's a separate video that talks a little bit more about it, but there's this British doctor's data, and there, what they're looking at is they, they followed um, British doctors for a 10-year time interval, and they looked at how many lung cancer deaths there were at the end of the time interval. And for that data set, the only variable we have is age. But if you want to try and estimate, um, I'm sorry, age and smoking, smoking yes or no. So they want to try and compare lung cancer death rates for smokers and non-smokers. And again, because lung cancer death can only occur once, what they need to do is break people into groups. Say uh, smoking, non-smoking and then age categories, I'm just gonna say A, B, C, D, E. So break people into a younger group, slightly older, slightly older, slightly older, and then the oldest. And within each of these groups, they're gonna to need to count how many lung cancer deaths were there, and how many person years exposure were there within each of these groups. So again, just to recap that, if we have the same follow-up time for everyone, we can model the number of times the event occurred. If people have different follow-up times, we're gonna to need to model the rate. And to do that, our model's gonna include something called an offset, which we'll um, talk about when we get to regression models, Poisson regression models for rates. Data can be recorded on an individual or aggregated level. If things can happen more than once, and they tend to happen more than once, we can record how often it happened for individuals. If we're looking at events that can only happen once or are rare and are probably not going to happen very often, we're going to need to aggregate the, aggregate the data in some way. And essentially that means all of our X variables are going to have to become categorical so we can form different groupings or strata and within each group count how often the event occurred and how much exposure was there in each of these groups. Worth noting that when we do this, the amount of person years exposure or whatever the unit of exposure or time is, is not gonna be the same for these groups. Right? So 
aggregated data and is pretty much always going to end up having to look at rates and not counts. So let's talk a little bit um, in the next videos about modeling counts versus modeling rates with Poisson regression. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.